Keepers, welcome back to the Myantics Ant Room, where we talk about how to take care of your ants from a lone queen all the way to a mature colony in an aformicarium. I'm proud to be back with you guys, and I have some amazing news about the hard work we've been putting in in the last couple of months. We have new designs for Myantics ant nests, outworlds, and accessories that will make ant keeping even easier than previously before. But we'll get to all that at a later time. Today's episode will be nothing less than epic when we take a look at our first and biggest colony in the Myantics ant room, the Avengers, followed up by the Golden Nuggets. Both of these carpenter species are amazing in their own sense, and we're going to take a look at what week-to-week -week cleaning and feeding looks like for both of these colonies, to give you a better idea what you can expect for your mature colonies, or better yet, colonies you already have in your collection. Let's twist into it. Let's go on in to the nests of the Avengers and take a quick peek at exactly how large they've become. In the original nest, you can see that the workers, majors, and supermajors storm the insides of the walls, which kind of looks cramped, but at any point they could always move over to the other nest. Up towards the top is where a lot of the brood is. You can see that there is cocoons mature larva, pupa, and even brand new egg stashes up by the heat where it'll grow the fastest and where one of the moisture vents is down below. It's all fine and dandy to look at a colony with their brood, but there's one thing that always piques the excitement, and that is the queen. Here we can see the queen of this royal empire in the middle, the most protected part of the nest. I believe that her favorite, larva, pupa, and cocoons stay with her at all times. What exactly is different with these than the ones over by the heat? It's hard to say, but they must be her favorites and maybe be the royal guard of the future. As we take into the outworld of the Avengers, what you'll notice right away is how dirty it is from one single week of feedings. Let's take the cap off and explore a little bit further. We have several roach carcasses over here, and many bins for them to have honey offerings along with a ramp and even a test tube that ran out of water and so we could get all the ants out we threw it in. Cleaning the outworld is not very difficult, though in this circumstance it may look a little bit threatening if you're a new ant keeper. The best thing to do is to start putting everything into a bin, especially the offering trays. This makes sure if there are any hiding workers, you can see them run out and you can put them back in the colony afterwards. Let's see, show you my bin real quick. There it is. My bin also has a light layer of fluon around it for the workers running around.
What looked like quite a mess five minutes ago is now completely clean with a little bit of new sand added and they now have a new offering of roach and of honey. If you notice, a lot of the workers that we saw in the beginning are no longer in the outworld. Would you like to see where they went? Well, of course we do. Let's take a peek inside the stockade's nest and see exactly where all these workers just went. Down below from the outworld we just cleaned is the Miantic stockade's nest chambers. With the right angle and a little help from a backlight, we can see just how much they use these chambers from day to day. This is truly where you can experience ants at their wildest. They treat these chambers like they would a log in the wild, and even occasionally bringing larva and pupa up here for whatever reason they find fit. As we travel over to the Golden Nuggets realm, otherwise known as Campanatus festinatus, you'll see that they are a smaller colony than the Avengers, yet just as awesome in their own way. Campanatus festinatus are a little under twice as large as discolor workers, therefore they take about twice as long to grow as them as well. This colony though is in its young maturity, as you can see there are many workers majors, and super majors already in the nest. As we've talked about before, a lot of the brood is by the heat cord, along with, as it looks, the queen. Let's try to get a close-up of her. It goes without saying, but smaller colony, smaller cleanup every week. 
Though, do not think that they don't need a lot of protein and a lot of sugar on a week-to-week -week basis, because these girls definitely have a sweet tooth along with a major protein intake. Let's go ahead and start cleaning these girls out. Well that didn't take too long at all. <laughs> and the ants look happy and excited that there's more honey and protein ready for them to slurp up. One thing I should mention though, though you see me giving them a lot of honey, don't forget that I do add a lot of fruits as well. Most recently I gave them tangelo juice and I gave them some nectarines the day before. With both of our Campanadas fed and them starting to re-emerge into the outworld to feast, that concludes us to the end of our video. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's little starter video, and I hope you enjoyed the footage that we got as well. Though it's amazing to see, some of the footage that we have on the channel is incredibly hard to film. Getting close up, especially with a camera, is amazingly difficult in some instances, and to know that we got some great footage tonight really makes me happy and positive for the videos to come in the future. I hope you guys learned a thing or two and look forward to next week's video. But until then, you all have a wonderful night. And remember, forever and ever, happy ant keeping.